Hello, everyone. Welcome. Why does it say leave meeting or got it? Yeah, don't leave. Uh, Just say got it. Okay. Yes. Hello and welcome to Tradition Kitchens with an acquired chef. We are so excited to have everyone here today, uh, wherever you are in the world. I'm Julia. I'll be emceeing this class and we'll be learning from Rosh this evening, this morning, this afternoon, wherever you are located. We are recording. Um, so those of you who might have to drop off early or folks who can't, um, who can't attend can have a chance to watch this. But First, we wanna invite you to share in the chat. Where are you calling in from? Hi, Marie, it's so nice to see you with your video on. Um, welcome, I see in gallery view in Zoom, Arlene, Betty, Susan, Edward, Cheryl. Welcome everyone, it's great to have you. I am calling in from Atlanta, Georgia. So tell us in the chat where you are coming from. Natasha from Boston, Marie from San Diego, Aloha from Hawaii. Wow, Susie. Oh, let's go there. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to hear more about you. We also love meeting folks and our classes are all about building and creating community, which really helps when you are on camera. So I want to invite you on the bottom left of your Zoom, if you're on a computer or an iPad or an iPhone, to please turn on your video so we can say hello to you and meet you. And we're going to do a fun thing called the Kitchen Cam, where we go around and we have folks say hello and let us know where they're calling in from. So um, Susie, heads up, we want to say hello to you. And maybe if you have a cool view of Hawaii, we could see it. No pressure. but. Marie, I'm coming over to you. Would you unmute and say hello? I'm going to put you in the spotlight. Yeah, Chell from San Diego, sunny San Diego, where the ocean meets the desert. Oh, wow. Sounds beautiful. Thank you for being here. How did you find Tradition Kitchens? I, I, I think through Eventbrite the first time. Cool. Love it. Well, we're so glad to have you. And thank you for joining us and saying hello. Oh. All right, I'm gonna take a look around and I see Natasha is here with video on. Are you ready for the kitchen cam just to say hello? I'm gonna put you on spotlight and where you're calling in from. Hi everybody, I'm calling in from Boston, Massachusetts. So it is fall season here and very, very cold, which I'm used to, but of course we're about to get snow very soon. Not surprised. Um, I did find out about this cooking class on Eventbrite because I love to cook and it is something that, you know, I love to do all the time. So learning something new of different cultures is, is, is really exciting. And thank you for having me. Of course, we love hearing that. And we're so excited to meet you and, um, and learn with you today. So thanks for being here. All right. Susie, I don't see your video on, but if it does come on, let us know. We're about seven minutes uh, past the half hour, so we're going to probably get started. Um, but first, I want to uh, say a special shout out to Verinder, who's here, Rush's mom. Hello. Don't forget to unmute. You're on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> hey, it's Susie. I, my cameras, I don't know what's going on, but I'm from Hawaii, but I'm originally a Brit. So, oh, well, yeah. welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is fun. I've attended several of these. I really enjoy it. Thank you so much. It's so good to have you. And hopefully your camera will come on at some point. Yeah. And hello, Verinder. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Julia. And hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Looking forward to Rish's class. <laughs> yes, our, our, uh, our cooking muse. Thank you for being here. <laughs> always, always, always for Rish. We always for you. <laughs> Yay! And tell everyone where you're based. We're quite international. Where do you live? You, you, where do I live? I live in Malaysia, yeah. The Borneo part of Malaysia, yes. Yes, we love it. Okay, thank you again for coming and tuning in. We're so happy to have you.
Um, so that. welcome to everybody, whether this is your first class or your 10th class, you are here uh, with us and part of our community where we gather to learn about cultural foods and the stories behind them and the people who make them. Our classes are very community-based. It's as if you are sitting in your neighbor's kitchen learning how to cook from them. So we appreciate your patience and understanding and we hope that you'll ask questions, but uh, be kind with them because we can't always get to everything right away because we don't want to slow down our class uh, and the learning process. So um, if someone knows the answer to a question, we always love counting on you. So feel free to use the chat for that purpose. If you haven't introduced yourself, let us know who you are and where you're calling in from. We have a tradition at Tradition Kitchens of taking a selfie, a Zoom selfie. I have taken hundreds of these during our times at home. So I wanna invite everyone to participate in our selfie. You could turn your camera on if you're able to. Um, and usually that's on the left-hand side of your screen next to mute. We do stop and start video. It'd be great to see some folks and um, take a picture together. So I'll call out a couple names, Marie, Janet, Edward, Rick, Lisa, Danny, Nina, Nicola. It'd be great to see you. I have, a, I have my view on gallery, which is quite nice. It's like the Brady Bunch, so I highly recommend it. You can see everybody who's here. Right now you're all a mystery. Well, most of you are, a few faces I see. So it'd be so nice if you would turn on your video and, and uh, say hello to us, that would be wonderful. Um, all right, it looks like we have a smaller crew who's gonna turn on video tonight. So let me see if I can just uh, spotlight that crew um, because I wanna make sure we have a good shot of everyone who's, uh, who's here. So give me one quick second. I'm just trying to remember how to do that. Let me see. Oh, I don't remember. Um, all right, we'll just have to cut and do some cutting and pasting. So thanks Mina for turning on your camera. Great to see you. So I'm gonna count us down for three, two. Esther, look at the camera, please. Uh, three, two, one. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, I wanna turn it over to Rosh, who's here today for I think her sixth class, if I counted right. So grateful, she's in Melbourne, Australia. We're gonna tell you all about an acquired chef and make sure that you know about the amazing uh, foods and stories that she teaches when she's not spending time with us. So we're so grateful to her for being part of our community and thank you for teaching uh, tonight. So the floor is yours. Thank you, Julia and Traditions Kitchen for having me back for, I've lost count, but thank you for keeping me honest for the sixth time. So I'm, I'm the founder of An Quiet Chef, which is just um, um, something I started to help sort of folks be a little bit more intentional about cooking. Um, my, our taglines, I love to cook and, and cook to love. Uh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> love to cook and cook with love um and so um you know we just i, I personally just love sharing what i know and love learning as i share um and and i think that everyone's got a little bit of a secret up their um sleeve that they they have just as a consequence of being in the kitchen um and so that that's really what the spirit of an acquired chef is you know learning the the methods of cooking the techniques the the ingredients, the temperatures, and all sort of breaking it down to that very granular level so that you can build it back up the way you absolutely like to do it. So with that, um, again, thanks to Traditions Kitchen for having me back. I'm really excited to be able to share with the Traditions Kitchen community. You guys have been awesome in supporting um, an acquired chef and just also giving me a space and um, an opportunity to share some of the things that I've picked up along the way. So with that, we're going to be doing Rog and Josh today. And they're I mean, Rogan Josh, I think is something that probably everyone has tried before. Would that be a fair statement? Hands up if you've maybe not had a Rogan Josh um, with the virtual hand that you, um, or if you wanna physically raise your hand if you're on camera, um, if you haven't had it, because I suspect most people have, um, but most people have also probably had the, um, you know, the, the, westernized version of rog and josh if, if let's call it that um, because the types in india are very different um, and i'll go through some of the misnomers but basically you know it, it is not a spicy dish even though it looks fiery um, it is mildly spicy but not as spicy as it looks it's kind of one of those dishes where it's its bite is much 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 less than its bark so um with that we'll get started we'll go through ingredients first um if anyone's cooking along today just kind of 
pop your camera on or raise your virtual hand so I'm aware and we can kind of cook along together. Um, I'll be doing the lamb version, the traditional version today. Um, and I'll talk through some of the differences between the version I'm doing versus some of the other ones that are available out there. So um, I'm just gonna go through and switch cameras to get started. And let's see, I'm just gonna do a quick screen share. Um, if it's our, oh, no, there it is. I was gonna ask Julia to, to give me rights to share, but you've already done that. You're two steps ahead of, of me. So um, there we go. So we've got um, to start with, and this would have been in some of the pre-work, uh, lamb that's been marinating in about a tablespoon. So this is about hot, uh, 500 grams, so half a kilo of lamb that's been marinating in about a tablespoon of lem lemon or lime juice. I've used lime juice and about a teaspoon of salt. And that's just been sitting there. And, and the real reason for that is um, it helps sort of get rid of the gamey smell or taste that um, uh, lamb typically has. Um, and so that's that one there. And what we're going to get started with um, before we do the lamb is kind of just go through the rest of the ingredients. So I'm about to put these ones in front of you. They're actually going to go into a blender. So these are sort of, I suppose, let's call them the aromatics. So it's a little bit of garlic, a little bit of ginger, a little bit of chili um, that's been soaking in a little. So it's dry chili that's been soaking in a little bit of boiling water when I put it in. It's now room temperature and some shallots. So we're using red shallots, could be banana shallots, could be French shallots, preferably instead of onions, because you don't want a very strong oniony taste. That's all going to go into a blender. Um, and so I'll pop that in to start. Um, and then we'll go through the rest of the ingredients um, as well. So shallots always at the bottom because they're the juiciest and they'll keep the blender blade running. I'm followed by the chili. And then I'll go in with the garlic and the ginger. So I'm just gonna go on mute really quick to get that blended and ready to go. And then we'll talk through the rest of the ingredients. So bear with me just about 30 seconds. It shouldn't take too long to um, uh, blend this up. So just bear with me while I find my mute button. As uh, Rosh is blending, I just want to remind everyone that we are recording. We will send out the recording afterwards along with the full recipe. Our cooking library has a list of all of our past and upcoming classes. And for the past classes, you can watch the videos and access the recipes there too. So I put that in the link if you're cooking along um, and I'll add it. So looking forward to today. All right, so that's fully blended. Um, and what I did was in addition to the quarter cup of water that had the, the chili sitting in them, I added another quarter cup. So half cup all the way through just to get, ooh, that's spicy, <laughs> just to get that going so you can see it's pretty runny. And so we're gonna fry that up in a second. But before we do that, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat up the oil and get the lamb going first. But let me just walk through some of the other ingredients before I get the, the pan fired up. All right, so we've got here in the middle a, about three tablespoons of ghee. So what I'm going to start with is about half of that to just kind of brown the lamb. Then I'll take the lamb out of the pan and then I'll put the rest of the ghee in. So ghee is clarified butter for those that may not be familiar with it. And I'm going to basically go through these little uh, um, uh, whole spices that will be um, fried in the ghee or tempered in the ghee before I add other things to it. So here first up we have black cardamom. So I'm just going to be putting the seeds in. I'm going to take out the husks, but I just wanted to show you that it came out of the husk. Similarly with the green cardamom, so two of each of, of the cardamoms, uh, the black and the green. And then I've got about four peppercorns, just four small black peppercorns. And here I've got um, cassia cinnamon, about two inches worth. So in the recipe card that Julia would have sent out, there is sort of a write up between what cassia cinnamon is and Ceylon cinnamon is. Um, here we're using cassia cinnamon. It is stronger and better suited for savory dishes, which is why we're putting that into the rog and josh. Um, the other things that we'll be using today, which we'll be adding later on after we've uh, thrown the blended um, paste into the pan to fry are um, in the recipe card as well. I've got, uh, I think, two, one or two teaspoons of fennel powder, um, coriander powder. And I'm actually, it's, this is not in the recipe card, but I'll be throwing it in. This is an extra little bit of ginger powder. Um, it just gives a little bit of sweetness. And then these are 
uh, Indian bay leaves. Again, not bay laurel leaves, but Indian bay leaves. Um, and, and the write up for the difference on that is also in the recipe card in case you're not familiar with it. Finally, what will be going in is the uh, one cup of water that's been sitting in saffron. So you might be able to see at the bottom, there's a couple of saffron threads um, sitting there. And it's just kind of been sitting in this boiling water for about 30 minutes to pull the color out. And that's going to go into the rog and josh as well. What you'll notice is that <laughs> this rog and josh does not have tomatoes in it. Um, I might just uh, stop sharing screen for a second. So it doesn't have tomatoes in it. Uh, it does have chilies in it, but not copious amounts. Um, it gets its red color from rathanjot. So rathanjot is basically um, an alkanet root. So it's a root of a um, 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 an alkanet plant. So this is basically what it's like. I'll show that to you up front. Um, but basically, it, it's what gives the color, uh, rogan josh its color. It's not actually the spice in rogan josh. Give me one second to switch that camera back. So it's basically going to be that, the, or the color as, or the rogan, and in, in the uh, recipe card is basically a combination of this alkanet root that'll be simmered in the clarified butter. So that's an additional three tablespoons to fry and pull the color out. And that at the end will be topped onto the dish. And that's actually what gives um, Robin Josh its red color. Now there are other ways to do it. And I've suggested dark beetroot powder. Instead, if you can't get your hands on this, it works really well. Um, and then also, uh, if you can't find either of those, the other way in which it's uh, traditionally done is with mawal or coxcomb or celosia flour. Um, and, and that's another way in which you can add that color without adding what typically people think they need to add, which is chili to get the red color, because it's not meant to be a spicy dish. It's just something that's in, I think Western cultures, it's tomatoes and chili that end up giving the red color, whereas in fact, it's actually pulled out of some natural ingredients that aren't typically spicy. Um, do we have any questions on that, Julia? Just just to pause and just see if if we can close those off or is everyone good on, on all those ingredients? Let's see, looks like Marie is just curious about how do you tell about quality um, of the spices if they're not available? Someone could only find the powder, which I think is okay. Um, mm -hmm. And what do you recommend? Where can you purchase? Well, Rash is based in Australia. Yes. So um, she might not be able <laughs> to make recommendations, but I'll make a plug for Penzi's, which is an amazing spices company um, that's US based and has many options. So if you want to address a few of those, I'm happy to repeat any if you didn't. <laughs> No, that's fine. I think I think most Indian grocery stores will carry um, all the spices that I've listed out, with the exception of Ratanjot. That one is hard to find. It's typically in a Kashmiri spice store, and that meant that might not be as available, which is why I put the alternative for um, uh, the um, uh, dark beetroot powder. And if you're using ground spices, it's probably about a quarter worth of ground. So say, for example, you know, th this amount of, um, of black peppercorns, there are four um, pieces of black peppercorns. That's probably about an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper powder. So same goes for cinnamon, same goes for cardamom. We're just basically kind of quartering it to the amount that, that you would have put if you put whole spices in. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's just quickly give it a scroll. Um, uh, does it affect the flavor if you don't have ratanjot? Not typically, ratanjot is not so much uh, something that's added for taste, it's added for color. Um, and that's why beetroot works really well as well, because it's not got a lot of strong flavors in it. Um, and then mawal, which is cox. If you did it the, the Muslim style rogan josh, where they do use the coxcomb flowers, that does have a, a nice floral fragrance. But what we're doing today is we're adding saffron to, to introduce that instead of, of using that, that flower. So we're trying to make do with as many ingredients as we can find while keeping it as authentic as we can. So um, hopefully that answers that question as well. Um, but yeah, hope, I think that's it in terms of questions. I'll get the pan started with um, with the, so I'm on full flame at the moment. I might just go ahead and share screen so you guys can see that. Um, switch over to this, yep, yeah, perfect. So I've just got that on full flame. I'm gonna bring it up to the heat and I'm gonna throw in the um, half of the, the ghee that I mentioned before. And it'll be just to brown the lamb first. And then I'm gonna take out the lamb uh, because what we wanna do is just kind of pull out some of the juices, 
give the, chan the, the lamb a chance to, to get sort of cooked on the outside a little bit before we go ahead with the spices and then the paste. Um, so that'll take about, say, five minutes, depending on how big your pieces of lamb are. Um, and then we'll, we'll move on to tempering the spices and then cooking the um, um, blended paste uh, before we add the lamb back in. And we'll, we'll step through all of that together. Once we get everything in the pan, uh, depending on the size of the lamb pieces you have, or you can even do this with lamb shanks, lamb cutlets, um, you may want to cook it for longer. So you can always cook it on a, a low heat for up to you know, an hour, an hour and a half, if you really want it on that low heat and you want that lamb to kind of just kind of fall off the bone, slow cook style. Uh, but today, just in the interest of time, I'm gonna try and speed cook this lamb in all of about 30 minutes, roughly, so that we can get to the end of class where I can show you the Ratanjot um, Rogan being added on top so that we get to the end of class. Now, the other thing I would also mention doing with this particular dish, if you, if you are cooking along today or plan on doing it, is to just go ahead and make some rice to have it with. What I have sitting in that corner over here, hopefully you can see it, is um, uh, pilau, which I've pre-made. Um, I will be putting a video up on uh, an Acquired Chef YouTube channel to show you how to make it, just in, again, in the interest of time, because we can't get through everything during class. But that's basically shahi jira pilau, which basically means, in English, caraway seed rice, right? So caraway seed is the one thing that's not in today's dish. And that's why I thought it would be a really wonderful way to complement the, um, the dish by having the rice have a little bit of caraway seed in it. So I'm going in with half the uh, ghee just to get that started. And I'll keep the rest for later. Now the uh, lamb already has salt in it because that's what we use to marinate it. So I'm not gonna be adding any salt to this dish. Um, the spices will do a wonderful job along with the ghee to add the flavor plus the, the, the salt that's already in there. So at the end, of course, uh, before we're done and switching off the fire, we can obviously add a little bit of salt, give it a taste to add for salt and sugar if, if, if that's what we want. All right, so that's nice and melted. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the lamb in. Bear with me, cause it's gonna get noisy. So I'm just gonna keep stirring it to make sure it doesn't get burnt on any one side, but I do want to see it caramelize before I take it out. So that's gonna take a couple of minutes as I mentioned before. And we're just gonna let that kind of do its thing until it gets to that point where it's a little bit brown. And on a high heat as well. So, okay, let's talk through uh, some of the questions that have come through. Yes, you can absolutely do use chicken. Lamb is what's traditionally used. Uh, so chicken's totally fine. Um, you just wanna, um, if you're gonna slow cook it, you don't wanna be using breast. You prefer to use leg or thigh, uh, just so that the meat doesn't get too tough. Uh, so, so totally fine to use chicken. And even I've given, um, I think Julia was asking, because there were quite a few questions that came back. There's a vegetarian option as well. Um, to, to do it with potatoes and eggplant and cauliflower. So that's also a really nice way to, to make it um, vegan. Uh, you'll notice as well today, we're not actually using yogurt. So the, the mogul style version doesn't add yogurt. There's a different style of Rogan Josh that doesn't use onions and garlic and will use yogurt instead. And that's uh, a different style of making it. Whereas today's version uh, is actually vegan if you, you replace the lamb with uh, potatoes and eggplant and cauliflower. Um, and so if you were just to finish up on that, going to use uh, eggplant and potatoes and cauliflower, I, you could absolutely fry the eggplant like I'm doing now instead of the lamb because it's gonna give it that nice crispy um, texture on the outside, same with the potatoes, um, but you wouldn't do that with the cauliflower. And even when you cook it later on and add it back, you'd add it at different points. So potatoes at the beginning, eggplant probably in the middle and cauliflower toward the end because it doesn't take long to cook. So um, that's how I would um, sort of just add it to the dish if you were doing a, a vegetarian version. And yeah, you can absolutely pressure cook it. So right now, um, Natasha, if you wanted to pressure cook it, 
I'd maybe temper some of these spices with the lamb and then put it into a pressure cooker and cook it until lamb soft. And then you can take it out and then you can just um, make the, uh, whilst it's pressure cooking, you can do everything else that we'll do, which is to fry the aromatics. Um, and then you can just add it uh, to, to the dish along with some of the, the powders that I showed you before, and then just kind of finish it up. So it'll be a quicker cook instead of trying to do it on a, on a low heat. So that's always an option as well. I am almost done with this guy. There's still a few pieces here that I want to, that are still a little pink. I want to see them kind of get uh, cooked just a smidge, not cooked all the way through, just cooked a little bit and then I'll pull it out. So um, hopefully that, that's almost done. So I'll be taking that out shortly. I love the view that you have set up, Rash, of you. And then side by side, we have the cooking going. So beautiful. <laughs> yes, um, just to make sure everyone gets a chance to, to, get, to feel like they're in my kitchen with me. That was really the intent around having that set up. So that, um, yeah, so you feel like it's a bit of an immersive experience. Hopefully that, that's coming across. <laughs> All right, that, um, that looks like it's ready to come out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pot the lamb. I'm gonna keep the juices and the oils and everything else in there um, because it's gonna, because I'm gonna add the, the lamb back into the dish uh, so it doesn't have to come out. And you don't have to be particularly obsessive about taking everything out. And there we go. All right, now into that pan goes the rest of the oil that we started with. And let's let that melt down before I add the spices in. And so we'll temper the spices uh, for, for all of 60 seconds maximum, because we don't want to burn the spices. We just want to get that flavor into the, into the ghee. And then we'll move on to, to add the aromatics that we blended up before. All right, so as I mentioned, I won't be adding the husks. You can if you want to but I just prefer not to fish, have to fish them out um, after I finish cooking the dish. So I prefer to take them out ahead of it and just kind of pop these guys in. So in with the two cassia cinnamon sticks and the four uh, peppercorns, and then just the rest of that cardamom is gonna go in as well. Perfect. Rush of all the spices in this dish, can mm -hmm. you have a favorite one, like flavor or smell? Do you have a favorite? Because I love cardamom. I'm crazy for cardamom. <laughs> well, actually, it's funny you, you ask. So it's, it's hard to, to pick, I think, because um, some of the other um, spices aren't even here yet. So coriander is probably one of my faves because it's just such a friendly, fruity one. Um, but like you, I love car uh, cardamom as well as saffron. Those three probably, frankly, together, actually really nice, but just on their own as well is, is quite lovely. Um, but yes, that, that would be my absolute favorite, um, especially, and especially um, for desserts. Uh, cardamom's lovely for desserts, I find. Not just, um, mm -hmm. not just um, the savory. The savory. That's yeah. it, yeah. 
I like coriander too. I'm curious, anyone who's joining us, if you have a favorite spice of the ones that are in this dish or others, um, please do let us know. Saffron is so expensive. Mm, yeah. The good I stuff, love huh? it, but I'm yeah. afraid to buy the saffron threads because I feel like they're gold, how, much, how expensive <laughs> they are. What if I mess up? Um, any secrets to like saffron, cooking with saffron? Yeah, um, a little bit goes a long way. Um, and then it's more about getting, um, like it, the reason it's so expensive is you don't need a lot of it. So um, in the Persians will typically, in, in sort of Indian culture, we would just, um, just throw it in like I have with the water, but I know that they typically will actually uh, pound it into a complete powder. Um, so the threads can, can be ground and then that gets more color out of it, more flavor out of it. So that's a really good way to actually kind of give you a saffron length given how expensive it is. Um, but yeah, that would be how I, that would probably be my biggest tip. And, and then also to, to soak it in either milk, but water is totally fine too. Um, to just kind of pull that color out. So, and that's why I've done that today. I haven't sort of, I won't just throw it in like another spice. I'll actually try and really get the flavor. And it's not just the color, but the floral fragrance that comes out of, of those little threads. Um, it, it really does have legs in terms of, of, of just having a power pack punch in terms of flavor. So you don't need a lot. So th those would be my tips, Julia. That sounds great. Oh, and Susie's telling us that you can order saffron from Costco. This is oh. unbelievable. Susie, would you mind unmuting and telling us, do you find it to be as flavorful and delicious? Um, not that anything is wrong with Costco spices. I love the giant garlic that I have from them, but I'm just so fascinated by this. Actually, I've been getting my spices from all over the place and I haven't tried the Costco one yet, but I intend to. You know, they have very high quality products. So I'd be surprised if it wasn't. And if you don't like it, there's a guaranteed money back. So yeah. and nice. it's $50 or something. I think they have a special going on at the moment. So yeah, I'm going to be ordering it. Hope that helps. Yeah, that's great to know. Um, great tip. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Um, oh, you're welcome. That is so exciting. My, my, uh, I have a family member on the line, so I feel like my aunt um, might get excited about this. So. <laughs> this looks oh, beautiful right. right now. It's so pretty, the, the sauce, the marinade. I love it, the colors and the consistency. Yeah, um, it smells wonderful. Um, just kind of the onion and the garlic getting cooked. Um, and so what we're gonna do is, is start to see that color turn slightly darker. Um, before we know it's completely cooked. Um, and then we'll add the lamb back once that's done, along with some of the other spices that I mentioned earlier. But yes, it's, it's, it's lovely. And it smells really, really nice in here right now. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for smell vision I think that's what you called it. It's such a yes. great title. <laughs> don't quite have it yet. <laughs> no, unfortunately we don't. Um, but yes. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? To be able to just smell everything from far, far away. I mean, we're getting there with 3D printers. We can start to print food now, although it is synthetic food, uh, but it is still food that you can consume. Uh, but if only we could start to get technology caught up on smell, that would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board. Cool, so I'm just gonna let that slowly cook. Go ahead, Julia. Nope, I'm just saying it looks great. If anyone else also thinks it looks great, feel free to add your comments in the chat or give Rasha a heart, thumbs up, your favorite reaction emoji so she can see. Keep going. Thank you for the appreciation. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, so I'm just gonna, what I typically tell folks whenever I do Malaysian or Indian curries of any kind is just to give it a smell. You're looking to smell that, that raw ginger, raw garlic, raw onion smell is no longer there. Uh, that's when you know it's done. Uh, if that, that sort of rawness is still there, it's not, you need to kind of keep going. And I, I'm gonna keep going. It probably needs a couple more minutes before I add the lamb in. Um, but while I do that, I might actually just start to 
um, except for the bay, bay leaves. I'm just gonna go ahead with what I mentioned before and that this is the aniseed or fennel powder. This is the coriander powder. And this is not in the recipe pot, but I'll, I really do like ginger. So I'm going in with two te uh, one teaspoon of ginger powder. And that ginger powder is really, um, it's more sweet than anything else um, in terms of, of the flavor, uh, which, which is really lovely, um, relatively speaking. All right, this is good in terms of the smell now has shifted. And you can also see that, that the paste actually does become a lot thicker. So what happens is a lot of the water that was in the paste that I had to add to blend the ingredients needs to get evaporated. And so once that evaporation has happened, then you know that that paste is gonna have a longer shelf life and it's gonna turn darker and, and be of this consistency as well. So that's about ready for it to have the lamb added in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So juices and everything, some of that water would have come out from the lamb just resting. That's all goodness. We want all of that to go in. And the bay leaves, what I like to do is just tear them up so that they have a little bit more length and can kind of really jump into the dish. I'm just gonna let that fry for about a couple of minutes. And then what I'll do is I'll add the saffron and then that then gets covered to cook for about 20 to 30 minutes. Oh, wow, yep. Smelling wonderful. All right. That should come to a nice little quiet stop. So you can see that that color's just gone golden all of a sudden because of the saffron. Um, so that's gonna be the color of the Rogan Josh itself before we add the Rogan, uh, which we'll make separately and throw on top. But this is gonna need to sit now and cook for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes for the size of the pieces I have. Um, again, if you have bigger pieces, so if you're doing lamb shanks, you probably will need either a pressure cooker like we chatted about before, or you need to look cook it for probably a lot longer than than uh, just 20 minutes. You just basically want to test the doneness of the meat before you switch off the fire or add the rogan. So I'm going to cover that up. I'm actually going to move it over to um, my, my trusty stove uh, just to have it simmer along while we make the rogan. That's just going to cook over there. Um, and in the meantime, we are going to make some rogan. <laughs> rogan just, so rogan just means, um, well, it means different things. It means something else in Persian as it does in, in, in Hindi, uh, but it basically just means fiery red color, um, simply put. Uh, so we're gonna get this pan started. We're gonna start first with the ghee. So there's a decent amount of it, that's where um, ghee, sorry, that's where rogan is sort of focused on. It is, in Persian, rogan means oil. Um, in, in Hindi, it means fiery red. So um, <laughs> depending on where you're from, it basically means red color with a lot of, of, of fat. <laughs> I'm so fascinated that it means different yet similar things in different languages. Languages, like, yeah. Um, well, the whole... The whole thing with the Mughal Empire was that um, it was the, the Persian uh, royalty coming to India. So they brought their heritage with them and, and with that, their language. So that's probably where some of that sort of crossover came. So it means different things um, in different places. But the froze. Is this just me or Rash, did you freeze? 
I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay. It was my internet. Never mind. I got worried. <laughs> am I am I still freezing or are we good? You're good on my end, Rash. <laughs> okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I don't know it about Julia, Julia though. Yeah. Yeah, just give her a couple of minutes. It may just be internet connection. How are you doing, Nancy? I'm good. Have you seen the news <laughs> on our end of the world? <laughs> no, I have not. <laughs> we, uh, we've had we've been cut off on all major highways and roads from the rest of Canada. Oh goodness! Any particular reason for that? Um, lots of rain, floods, mudslides, that's, and right. such. So people are panicking over here and clearing out all the shelves again. Mm. So <laughs> yeah, okay. Yes. Well, to are there any toilet paper fiascos going on over there? Is there was it well? Over well, because um, farmland got uh, affected, so people are, are um, buying milk, eggs, butter, so, okay. and, and the, um, staples. the staples, and of course, also, um, they're buying, um, you know, petrol or gas for their cars, so we're running out of, uh, <laughs> oh dear. yeah, I know, so, oh dear, oh dear. You guys will survive, but Australia did, so anyone yeah, else can. <laughs> exactly. I was thinking of you guys during the fires and such as well, yeah. right? So that's apparently what happened. It was, um, you know, because of the fires in the summertime, then erosion, and of course, no way to hold the water. So, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, um, hopefully, you know, humanity prevails. I like to say mm -hmm. that. I think that, yes. that everyone has it in them and it's just a matter of the situation bringing it out. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. But oh, um, really... <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Otherwise I'm doing fine. I, I have all my provisions. <laughs> so <laughs> um, and my spices. <laughs> and your spices, as always. Um, yeah. I'm just uh, checking the questions. Um, so I think Danny's kind of come back with a question on beetroot powder. I'm just going to drop that heat a little bit because that he's starting to smoke. But essentially, you can see, Danny, just give me one second, but you can see what I've done here. The ghee has basically been yellowish and it's now completely turned red. Um, and that's because of the rotten joat. And so I don't want to cook it for very much longer. But what I wanted to show you before I pulled him out is basically that's how that red color comes about. So again, you can get it done with rotten joat as well. I'm just going to quickly. Um, add these ginger slices. This is totally optional. You don't have to do this, but I, again, really like ginger and, um, and, and, and think that it adds a wonderful little dish, a little flavor to the final dish. So I'm taking out that rotten joke over here and just letting that finish up. Um, and it'll be ready for us to throw on top of the um, uh, Rogan Josh when it's ready. I just realized I did not put my timer on, but we'll give it 15 more minutes, I think. And we should be ready to, to serve that. Um, but Danny, your question, uh, rotten joe beetroot powder, but if I had fresh beetroot, um, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't use fresh beetroot because it's got too much water in it. I would probably um, honestly use coloring <laughs> if you really, really wanted to. I mean, you could absolutely use Kashmiri chili powder. It's not as spicy, but it's still got a bit of heat to it. So if you, if you do add, and I've seen quite a few recipes where they just kind of fry the, the way I've done the rutten joat, they'll fry that in, in the Kashmiri powder, chili powder in it. And so that can, that typically is the go-to for the color. Um, but if you don't want spicy and you don't have beetroot powder, you know, maybe forego, <laughs> you can forego the, um, the, um, the uh, color if, if, you, if you don't mind it at all. Uh, but yeah, I'm just gonna put this guy over here because it's too smoky. Um, but yeah, we're just going to have to wait a couple of minutes for the um, lamb rogan josh to cook. So let's see if there are any other questions. Um, you're welcome, Danny. All good with that. Um, let's see. 
Great, if you're using chicken, would you need to marinate in advance? Um, you, you could with some salt, because chicken is, is quite insipid if you, if you don't add the salt, I, I'd recommend that. You don't necessarily need to use the lime, because that's really for the gamey flavor. You can certainly add it if you want, but probably not a tablespoon, maybe just a squirt. Um, but yeah, otherwise chicken doesn't need much more than salt and then it'll be ready to go. And you can do that like a couple minutes before, you don't have to leave it in for a long period of time because then it'll start to pull out the water from the chicken and you don't want that. Cool. Well, actually I might bring the lamb back here since the Rogan's done. It really does smell quite nice. <laughs> Were there any other questions just while we waited for that Rogan Josh to finish up or was everyone all good? Let's see, someone wants to know about if using eggplant, potatoes, cauliflower, should we use salt in advance or just season at the end? I think you'd be able to, to season at the end, um, except for the eggplant. So when you, once you slice the eggplant, the best thing to do is to sort of sit it in salty water until you're ready to cook it. Um, and so I think I mentioned at the start as well, when we've braised the lamb, I think it'd be great to braise the eggplant um, at the start and potatoes as well. Just like, you know, potatoes will give it that nice crunchy sort of texture on the outside and eggplant, it'll kind of give it a little bit of a shape. Um, but in terms of marinating it, uh, I, I would say you can always add, potatoes love salt. So, you know, you can always throw a little bit of that in so that the salt gets into the potato rather than it just sort of sitting in the curry. Uh, if that's what happens if you add it at the end. So I'm um, always good to just, even with like the chicken, just a, a, a little bit of uh, lemon, uh, lemon juice um, and, and some salt, just kind of just, and separately, right? So then you can fry the potatoes, fry the eggplant, and then bring it all together in the curry like we did the lamb before. So yeah, so definitely salt, maybe a little bit of lime juice if you want, and then sort of, um, uh, sort of fry it at the start to give it that texture. So yeah, hopefully that answers that question as well. What are the best side dishes to serve along with this? Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> may as well just pull them out, but I made shahi jira palau, but you can just use plain rice. So that's him um, in terms of just, again, having caraway seeds in it, which is not in this dish, but you can just have it with plain rice. You can have it with naan, any kind of flat bread doesn't have to be naan. Um, but yeah, that's how it's typically had. It's going to pop that lid open. Yeah, I think this is done. Um, yeah, I think so. I'll quickly pull out a piece just to make sure that it's completely cooked, but it does look perky and like it's ready to, to be had. Just... Yep, that's completely cooked all the way through. There's no pink left in it. So that's ready to go in terms of, um, um, because I've, again, had small, smaller pieces and kind of cooked it on a slightly higher heat so that we could be done uh, with the cooking side of things quickly. But that's the Rogan Josh. It looks like a regular curry. Um, you know, typically you, you would add the Kashmiri powder instead of the dried chilies that I use. That would give it more red color. Um, but we're about to throw the, the Rutten Jot in. So again, you'll, you'll remember before I did it with the rutten jote and some ginger slices just to give it that flavor. 
I've removed all of that now and we've just got the Rogan and that's just kind of going to go all over the top. And I'm just going to let that sit for a minute and I'm going to mix it up. Um, and then once I mix it up, it's just going to become a slightly redder curry. And what will typically happen, as you'll see with Rogan Josh, is um, it will, when left alone for a little while, it'll start to separate back, back out again. And that's why you always see that lovely color of red sort of sitting around the corners of a Rogan Josh, uh, because that um, uh, oil and Rathenjot is not water soluble. So it'll always continue to separate um, no matter how many times you try to stir it in. But we will let that sit for a couple of minutes just so that they all kind of mix really nicely together. And then we can start to plate and we are done with cooking. Just let that, yeah, see, he doesn't want to mix in, does he? <laughs> but yes, that is all good. But yeah, that, so that color just went a little bit darker as well, as you notice, because of the red being added. Um, but that's typically what the color of Rogan Josh sh should be, unlike some of the colors you'll see when you buy like from a takeaway restaurant, it's always got a good amount of tomatoes in it and, and chili in it. And, and that's why it has that extra red color in case you're wondering why it doesn't look like uh, what you've typically bought or had at a restaurant. But yeah, so just going to Make some space. All right. I'm going to move this guy away. There we go. All right. So I'm just gonna tilt him over a little bit and start to dish him out into this pan, ever so gently. <laughs> so at this point, if you wanted to, you could take out the bay leaf and the cinnamon stick because you don't wanna eat those. They're, they're purely for flavor. Um, so if you want to pull them out before you put it into a serving dish at the dinner table, you can go ahead and do that. You know, before you add the rice, um, mm -hmm. just the lamb separately, it looks like a classic beef stew that you would have. It's just so interesting how some dishes translate between cultures, but then the spices that you add can just change it and make it make it unique to that culture. Right, like a stroganoff, right? Yes, exactly. And, and a stroganoff typically has caraway seeds in it because it's, it's even though it was, it was Persian, um, uh, it was, sorry, it was popular in, in, in Persia or the Persian empire, it's also um, widely used in, in German cooking. So, it, and, and they even make an alcohol with it. I can't remember the name now, but they mix some fennel and um, caraway seeds together. I wouldn't be able to pronounce it anyway, but it's a really interesting sounding um, uh, alcohol that's used particularly for desserts and it's extremely German. <laughs> um, but yeah. There you go. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right with regards to just the look of it. And it's just three different changes here or there. And all of a sudden, it's a completely different dish. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so here we are. We've got this ready to go. We'll just throw some coriander on top. 
Um, you can chop it up if you like. I don't mind having it whole. Um, but there you go. That's your Rogan Josh. And you can have that with your uh, rice. I might actually just do a quick plate. Uh, did you want to take a photo or anything like that, Julia? Yes, you read my mind. I'm sitting here trying okay. to zoom in. Yes. It looks so beautiful. <laughs> might oh just gosh. leave that sort of in the background. Whoops. There we go. Hopefully that's close enough. Yes, let's see. I got it. I love it. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> no, you're welcome. Um, but you can already start to see, even having just let it sit for a few minutes, you can see that that Rogan's starting to separate around the sides. It'll continue to do that. Um, I think like in the photo that I shared where it kind of just creates a ring around. Uh, but here we go. So we're going to have a little bit of rice and a little bit of Rogan Josh and that would be essentially dinner <laughs> or breakfast or lunch for me rather. <laughs> yes, let me just get myself a nice heaping spoonful of rug and josh and voila. It looks amazing. I forget, was anyone cooking along with us? Um, I don't no think one? so. Um, yeah. No one called it out, but yeah, here you go. Easy peasy. And that was like an hour, less than an hour. What a yeah. fast creation of such a culinary delight. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not, not, hopefully not too complicated other than one or two of the, the ingredients, which hopefully we've talked through all those variations and also just vegan versions. Um, but yeah, the, the, the pundit version of Kashmiri Rogan Josh, as I mentioned, will, will not use root vegetables because it's typically made for uh, Brahmins. Kashmiri um, pundits, who even though they don't eat certain root vegetables and 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 our Brahmins are typically vegetarians, they do eat lamb. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those really odd nuances. And so they make it with um, lamb and uh, yogurt and not root vegetables. So they'll instead of root vegetables use ginger, a lot more ginger powder and hing or asafoetida because it gives that flavor of garlic and a little bit of ginger um, instead. And so their version is is different. Um, but not for vegans because <laughs> it's got yogurt in it. So yeah, there we go. Nice. Let's see. It looks like we have, uh, Nancy's going to make it. And yes, please, if you do make it, tag Rosh and us on Instagram or Facebook mm. so we can share and celebrate your dish. Mm -hmm. um, we would love to hear what people thought about the class. And if there's any questions we didn't get to, I'm just looking back here. Did we get to the thin or thick sauce question from Natasha? Oh. How do we make it a thicker sauce? Yeah, look, you'll just need to cook it down for longer <laughs> or when you soak the um, saffron, I put a cup of water for 500 grams or half a kilo of, of meat. So you can just reduce that. Uh, saffron doesn't need a lot of water to, to pull the color out. So even if you have that, you used a quarter of a cup, you, you'd still be able to um, um, sort of get the color come out of it and the flavor and fragrance without compromising on, on having a runny sort of um, a gravy. So you can, you can do it that way, or you can just kind of, when you cook it, uh, leave the lid off so that the water evaporates out. So that's two options for you to play with. If you're already cooking and you've got the water in there, leave the lid off, um, cook it for a bit longer, on a low fire or just don't put as much water to start with so those would be the two the th two thoughts on that and the question from susan about uh roten jot roten jot yes. yes where any recommendations on where to buy so, it yeah roten jot is the indian name so alkanet root is the um english name so and, and there's a couple of different alkanet uh, plants, but typically if, if it's sold in the root form, alkanet root uh, will, we'll, you know, you can probably buy that potentially at a, a herb, a, a herbal store or something like that. But if not, you probably would be able to find it at an Indian grocer. And yeah, you know, um, again, if you can't find it at an Indian grocer, you can always use uh, beetroot powder. Um, but the way I did it today, just so you know, in case you do buy it and, and want to try cooking with it, I found a nice big log of, of rotten jote. Um, typically they, they come in broken pieces. So I would actually wrap it up in a muslin cloth just so that you can pull the color out without sort of having all those bits and bobs in the oil. Cause you don't actually want to add that to the dish. You just want the color of it. So um, yeah, that's a tip for you in case you do find it and, and want to experiment with it. 
Nice. Great. Any final questions for Rash or comments? We love seeing all the um, all the wonderful kind words. And please do let us know how it turns out. Yeah. Um, Hi, Rash. Do, I've got a quick question. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Um, actually, I've got two questions. So uh, the first one. So if I am using Kashmiri chili powder, um, mm. how much would I add and at what stage? Did you say to add it instead of the dried chilies in the blender? Yes, correct. So you wouldn't throw it into the blender just because it's red and it'll kind of give your color, uh, potentially give your blender drug a stain. So when I added the fennel or aniseed powder and ginger powder and coriander powder, you would just at that point add the Kashmiri powder. Um, I used for, so that's when you add it in terms of the substitution, I'd probably go um, with, for, for the four, four dried chilies that I use, you could probably just go with one teaspoon of Kashmiri chili powder. That's mild. So, you know, if you want to go spicier, you're more than welcome to. That should give enough redness to it, even without the rotten jote. So, you know, if you really want the redness that you saw come in the rotten jote, you probably need to go up to a tablespoon, but that's when you start to go, ooh, that's a bit spicy. So start <laughs> with a teaspoon and, and then kind of go, go up from there and, and see where you okay. land. The other option, that's just so cute. you know, is if you mm -hmm. added just like a teaspoon to um, the, the sort of when you're frying it with the other ground spices, you could still do it the way I did with the extra clarified butter or ghee in a separate pan. You can just fry that Kashmiri um, chili powder. So you can maybe add one or two extra teaspoons so you can add it at the end. So you can split it up. That way you get some color coming in on top with the oil without kind of trying to become too spicy as a dish mm -hmm. as a whole rather. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's was that? Great. That's all right. Um, was that, that the two questions or? No, my second question. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> because I'm making this later, so I just wanted to, to iron out yeah. anything. Um, so also, obviously, traditionally, you don't add tomatoes, but mm. I kind of like the tomatoes with it. Yeah. So would you just add those towards the end or, or would it not go with this particular style of Rogan Josh? Traditionally, it wouldn't go, but who's to say you, you can't add it? I'd throw it in with the blender just so that you get that pureed. I mean, unless you want sort of tomato chunks, if you're happy for it to be blended, because that'll also add to the color uh, without okay. needing to add too much chili powder, that redness will come through. Um, so yeah, I just, um, skins and everything, just blend it up and, and, mm. and throw it in uh, with the onion, uh, onion and ginger and garlic, yeah. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so looking forward to making this. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. And let us know how it goes. Will do. <laughs> cool. Amazing. Rash, I just put your social media links in the chat. Um, not sure if we have anyone from Australia or Melbourne on the line, but I feel like you should tell us about this amazing festival that you are going to be live demoing at. Yeah, so Fair, and Square, Fair at Square is a festival run by the Ethical Lifestyle uh, Committee. So they have a festival every year. Um, this year, it'll be back to live. So we're out of lockdown officially in, in Melbourne, at least for now. And so they'll be going ahead and doing that in the middle of December. It's the 11th and the 12th, which is a Saturday and a Sunday. So I'll be at the festival cooking live. I'll be um, presenting a dish that's focused on sustainable cooking. Um, and I'll be doing that uh, on the 11th uh, at 10 a.m., um, at the, if, if, you're, if you're in Melbourne, at the Immigration Museum uh, in the city. So um, if you're around and you wanna check it out, not just for me, but it's a whole festival, there'll be other folks doing cooking demos as well. And there'll be boots of all sorts of um, produce and products that are ethically and sustainably sourced. This year's theme is living local. So it, it's all about um, uh, trying to source ingredients locally. But yeah, jump, uh, come along and jump on and, and check it out. Um, I think the, if, if you wouldn't mind, Julia, just popping that link in there, um, just so that in case you're in Melbourne and you wanna check it out, you, you have that option. Yes, I just did. I'm gonna put it again. It looks amazing. Okay. I know we often Thank you. have a lot of people who are from Australia in here. So anyone on the line in particular from Melbourne or Sydney or somewhere else? I think Danny is from Melbourne. Um, but I don't know if anyone else is, um, but yeah. And Radiance. Oh, Radiance, great to see you again. I remember you from the past classes. Oh, Catherine as well. Yeah, it'd be great to see you back, Catherine. I love it. A good excuse for a future visit. So make sure yes. the festival happens in 2022, please. <laughs> oh, it's every year. So it's just a matter of getting, getting myself back on the, on, the, on the calendar, which hopefully I can manage. So yes, definitely swing by. 
Sounds great. And Rush, when are we going to get to um, learn from you again? I know you're teaching another class, um, mm -hmm. perhaps with the library or another organization, yes. but tell with us. With the about library. Us. Yeah. That's right. So with Central Coast Library, I'll be doing a class for pakoras, which is basically an Indian vegan fritter. Um, we'll be doing that about in a week's time. So it's Monday, the Monday in Australia, the 29th, I believe. Yes, 29th, so it'll be 28th for, for the US and other parts of the world. Um, yeah, I'll be doing just a very simple um, dish, uh, uh, vegan fritters. And um, so that's the upcoming class. Uh, so yeah, so I think you've just popped that link in there. Thanks, Julia. In case you wanna sign up, it's completely free. Um, and then also uh, the other class that we, we did a poll for at the end of the previous class was for cha kway piao or stir fried flat rice noodles, which is a Malaysian dish that I'll be doing hopefully in the new year. Yes, we're very excited for 2022, kicking off with some amazing um, more classes from Rush. So thank you so much. Um, feel free. I see so many kind words in the chat. If you want to express your appreciation, let us know what you thought of today. Uh, we'll also send out an email with the recording and um, let you know uh, how to access that and also the recipe as well. But Rush, we're so thankful to you for being part of our community, being a student first, a teacher your second and just being a wonderful addition and having your mom here and such yes. wonderful people so thank you thank we really you appreciate no. Amazing. Thank you again. I'm always a always a student, sometimes a teacher. So it's, it's always great to be able to, to share and, and thank you again. Um, and just one thing I just realized that Rice is staring back at me. Um, keep an eye out on, on the YouTube channel in case you want to learn how to make that pilaf. Again, just in the interest of time, I wasn't able to go through that today. But if that's something of interest, you can have that with the previous dishes I've made. So there's been uh, Mughlai Korma, there's been Kima. So all those dishes go really well with Palaf and it's a really simple one to, to learn how to make in case you're interested. So yeah. Awesome, thank you so, so much. Um, I am going to just quickly give some final class announcements um, and thank you again for everyone. First, please feel free to use the Zoom chat to let us know what you thought of class. We'll also send you an email and we're collecting quotes to reflect on this. Um, it's been two years that we've been doing these cooking classes. So we wanna publish a post uh, looking back. So what does it meant to you? You might wanna take a little bit of time to think about that and let us know if we can share it in our blog and on social media. Uh, second, I just put a link to all of our upcoming classes. We've been a little bit crazy for uh, November, December. So I'm gonna highlight a few of them coming up in the next uh, month. On Sunday, if you are uh, a dog person or you love dogs or you have one or you wanna bake for, for someone who has a dog, come join us for a very special Cooking with a Cause class with Dina and her dog, Levi. Um, which I find really cute because my last name is L-E-V-Y. So uh, if Levi was my dog, it would be Levi Levy. Um, so they're going to teach us how to uh, make yummy, healthy dog biscuits that humans could taste. You'll have to come and see. I think they're, they're safe for humans. Um, so please join us. That's at 4 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. Um, on Friday, December 3rd, we're doing a um, another mutton dish, mutton Kadi and Laka Paratha, please correct me, uh, Rash or Parul or anyone else who- Yeah, it's um, Mutton Kadai and Lacha Prata. So uh. it's, um, <laughs> so literally just, so, so it's not complicated guys. It's just mutton cooked in a wok, an Indian style wok with um, uh, Prata, which is flatbread. I think Lacha is, um, what's Lacha mom, do you know? Bread. <laughs> it is, I think, fried, you know, the fried bread. Right. Fried okay, so mom. fried flat bread. Yes, perfect. Thanks, mom. It is like I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. Always yeah. go up up to mom because she's the muse. <laughs> but yes, that's, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's really a wonderful dish, um, uh, dishes rather. I'm so excited. We're going to have Ragini, uh, who's teaching her first class with us. So really appreciate that. Then December 10th, if you want to learn Thai, we're bringing back Ploy who's teaching Thai uh, North Noodle Curry Soup and Ginger Tea. And then as of right now, our final class of the year is going to be Sustainable Seafood Stew 
with Andy and the Agricultural Institute of Marin. And so that class will also be another Cooking for a Cause event um, where you've been trying to, during the pandemic, support different causes that are meaningful to our chefs, um, whether it's been food banks or to address some of the hate against the Asian community and stand up against violence. Um, we've supported a number of causes and we really appreciate this community's generosity if you're able to, to contribute to those. So you'll get an email with all of this summarizing and the links. And with that, we wish you a great evening, afternoon, or day. So thank you so much to Rush and her mom and all of you for being here and tag us in those photos when you make them. Thank you, everyone. Feel free on your way out to uh, show an emoji reaction to let us know what you thought of today. And we appreciate you being here. Ah, thanks for the applause, Nancy, the thumbs up joy, Danny the heart, amazing. <laughs> All right, see you next time, Rosh. We'll chat hopefully before 2022. <laughs> take care, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you. Yeah, take you care. too. Good luck with your festival. And thanks everyone <laughs> for wonderful, kind words in the chat. So nice. Um, Danny, I'm just going to read yours out loud as a wonderful way to wrap up. Uh, love these classes, discovered them during lockdown, and they have become a real highlight, learned so much. They have been a really wonderful way to bring the world together through the shared love of cooking. I'm pretty sure that this just totally made my weekend. So thank yes, you so much. 100%. Amazing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Rish. Bye. Bye. -bye.